pass through this House. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Louise Upstein. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'm pleased to uh, rise and speak in support of the Child Poverty Reduction Bill in its uh, final reading. And I want to just, first of all, put um, on record um, the way that Leader Simon Bridges um, was very clear at the outset of this work that he wanted to work constructively with the government, um, with the Prime Minister, on this uh, piece of legislation. And that, Madam Speaker, is really following on from former leaders of uh, national, both in opposition, um, the Right Honourable um, Bill English, and then the former Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Key. Uh, and uh, it's great to see that there is a continued focus um, on improving the lives of children in New Zealand. So I wanted to just uh, look at a couple of uh, figures, because one of the challenges in uh, legislation that comes before the House is that it's got to be more than uh, just what the intention is. Uh, and it's got to be about the immeasurable outcomes that that legislation enables. So um, one of the jobs of the opposition, uh, although we've absolutely constructively worked on the legislation, and I want to talk about a couple of key areas shortly, uh, it is the job of the opposition to hold the government to account. Um, so the government has uh, set some targets. Uh, one of the targets that the opposition was a little concerned about was the level of aspiration in terms of the targets set around uh, the number of children that would be lifted out of material hardship. And we've actually just heard with the speaker um, prior a bit of a contradiction in terms of ambition. So in a five-year period when National was in government, uh, we lifted 85,000 children out of material hardship. And uh, this government has committed to lifting uh, only 70,000 children out of material hardship over a 10-year period. But what the Minister of Social Development has just said is by 2021, the families package would lift 64,000 children out of um, material hardship. So it's a little confusing that there would be then only 6,000 children um, from the period 2021 to uh, 2028. So, so this side of the House is concerned about the level of aspiration. Uh, when 85,000 children were lifted out of material hardship over a five-year period, um, 70,000 in 10 years uh, doesn't seem high enough. Um, but it's the government of the day. The, the legislation is drafted in a way that the government of the day sets their targets. Uh, they've done that. Um, so as the opposition, we will hold the government uh, to account for the outcomes um, for those children, and, they, uh, and the New Zealand public can rely on us for doing that. But as everybody knows, um, and only too well those who uh, work and uh, listen to their constituents across their electorates, is poverty isn't just about lifting incomes. Uh, and again, the member who spoke before me talked about two of the three targets that were related uh, to incomes. And what this side of the House is clear about, uh, Madam Speaker, is uh, the other significant challenges that uh, families face and the fact that it's got to be um, a broader perspective than just about income. Uh, my colleague, the Honourable Alfred Naro, also very clearly made the point, which I think is important uh, to repeat, uh, that we don't confuse uh, the issue of households on low income um, then kind of being in poverty and being unable to provide a family environment, uh, as many Kiwi families do, and we want to ensure uh, that those families are supported. But I want to talk about the families, um, the vulnerable families that are actually trapped in deprivation. And some of the things that trap them in deprivation include long-term benefit dependencies, uh, low educational achievement uh, and also uh, recidivist crime. And that's why one of the areas that we uh, wanted to improve the legislation by was including um, child poverty related indicators. And uh, those uh, who followed uh, the work of the previous government around the better public service targets will recognise areas around housing, areas around health, and education, uh, child abuse and crime, um, that all really are indicators of a broader picture of poverty. And so 
What the government of the day is able to do with these child poverty related indicators being incorporated into this legislation um, is to choose which of those indicators. Um, I'm optimistic, uh, Madam Speaker, that the government will choose multiple indicators, not just one. Uh, and as I said, housing, quality of housing, health and education, um, because those are the areas that if government policy reflects on having an impact on that, uh, will absolutely change the life course um, of the children that live in that household. So it, it was a pity that um, close to the time that the Child Poverty Reduction Bill was introduced, the government uh, got rid of the better public service targets. And one of the things, as well as covering those child poverty related indicator areas, the better public service targets had greater levels of accountability on the government departments. And this has been one of the debates that was had through the legislative process was, it's one thing to have accountability on a minister, and in this case it's the Prime Minister, who's the Minister for um, Child Poverty Reduction. But actually, where the work happens each and every day is the government departments. And if you don't have measures and accountability clearly and squarely on them, uh, then the ability to produce the outcome as opposed to just an intention is watered down. So, uh, as I said, this legislation gives uh, the opposition and the New Zealand public um, the opportunity to measure uh, the progress of the government of the day. Uh, and as I said, it's not just about incomes. It's got to be about uh, improving health, improving education, improving our record on child abuse, um, as well as improving uh, the number of households that rely on uh, benefits. The other area, Madam Speaker, that I think is really important in terms of the, the way this legislation has been improved uh, was the incorporation of social investment. So uh, what we saw uh, in, in the previous government was uh, a, a quite a radical way of using data to drive innovation and you know, tackle real problems for real families. And uh, very, very complex uh, and uh, hard to solve challenges, but social investment created absolutely the best toolkit to be able to understand both the context and the culture in which um, the poverty and, and hardship and dysfunction was occurring. Um, so the fact that that has been incorporated into um, this legislation that came as an SOP um, that was initially lodged by my colleague, um, the Honourable Alfred Naro, is, is important. And that, again, he used the word pioneering in his speech. Uh, actually, the approach using social investment was also um, pioneering. And so I'm pleased uh, that some of that has been incorporated um, into this bill because, uh, like the government, the opposition absolutely does want to ensure uh, that every New Zealand child grows up um, happy, healthy, and with wonderful opportunities in front of them. And the other piece I want to just uh, reiterate is uh, that, you know, the family, the family is absolutely the best form of welfare. So another area that the opposition will be holding the government to account on uh, is the supposed welfare overhaul. And uh, as a government that increased benefits in 2015, um, I was somewhat shocked that the Minister of Finance has come out and said that increases to benefit are off the table. Um, so the Welfare Work Expert Advisory Group hasn't even reported back. Um, he said it's off the table, um, and that was somewhat um, surprising, because what we saw in 2015 was a marked increase um, in the ability of those families who were dependent on benefit um, to do better than they were. Uh, and it's also somewhat puzzling, given that those on the lowest incomes uh, I would have thought would have been a priority in this government's wellbeing budget, uh, which of course it has uh, spoken uh, a lot about. But I want to uh, finish my final comments uh, on those that both submitted on the legislation, uh, but also they are often the same people that are working with our most vulnerable children and families on the front line. Um, and as we go into the Christmas season, Madam Speaker, I want to uh, give a particular word of thanks uh, to them and their organisations. Uh, some of their workers are volunteers, uh, some of them are paid. Um, they do critically important work um, in our communities with our families. Um, so I want to thank them for, their work, for the work they do uh, and to say that uh, National is proud to support legislation uh, that improves the lives of our most vulnerable children 
um, and we won't shy away from holding the government to account for their targets. Madam, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Tracy Martin. Kia ora, thank you. Thank you, Madam.